wait. There's a nice little one over there. Everybody makes mistakes, even the pros at Disney. That's right. Still, we're pretty surprised that some of these errors made it into Disney's most classic movies. Let's talk about them. Number one, where the heck did Ariel's blanket come from? Once Ariel gets her legs, she's understandably pretty excited about getting into a nice cozy bed for the first time. Imagine putting your feet into a comfy bed for the first time after having just a tail for your whole life. Magical stuff. In this moment, there are no blankets on the bed. Yet seconds later, Ariel is all curled up under a full comforter. Could she have gotten this in the time Sebastian was talking? Maybe, but that would have been pretty tough. You are hopeless, child. Number two, Anna and Hans can fly? Well, not exactly. We all know that Anna and Hans were certainly not destined to be together. Oh, Anna, if only there was someone out there who loved you. But they did seem like they had potential as a couple, at least for long enough to deliver one of our favorite songs in Frozen. If you look closely during this scene, though, there's something pretty weird going on. Their shadows are floating. In terms of physics, this just makes no sense, so we're guessing this was a major animation mistake. Number 3. Tiana's earrings are here one moment and gone the next. When Tiana is watching Charlotte and Naveen dance, she's wearing gold earrings. Then suddenly she isn't. Did the animators just forget? Apparently, and it actually makes matters worse that she's wearing them again a second later. Number 4. Whoever worked on this scene might not know how baby monitors work. We all remember this scene in Toy Story at Andy's birthday party. The army men are keeping tabs on the birthday gifts that are coming in and reporting back to Woody on the baby monitor. This is it! In, this is it! Quiet, 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 quiet! All right. The problem is that the handheld part of a baby monitor is the part you take around with you. It's just a speaker. The part with the microphone is on Andy's bedside table, so as cute and clever as this moment seemed, it actually wouldn't have worked this way at all. And the toys in Andy's room wouldn't have been able to hear any of these updates. Mission accomplished. Well done, man. Pack it up. We're going home. Number 5. What kind of sleeves does Cinderella's wedding dress have? Almost impossible to tell. Right, sir. Good day. Good day. See, when Cinderella is running down the steps with the prince, she's wearing a wedding dress with long sleeves. The pair gets into the carriage, and it's clear that she's still wearing the same long sleeve dress. Yet seconds later, we can see her in the back of the carriage with a short sleeved wedding dress on. There's simply no way she had time to change, so we're guessing they just forgot what her wedding dress was supposed to look like. Good heavens, child. You can't go in there. Number six. Riley's mom's glasses in Inside Out also do a bit of a disappearing act. Did you guys pick up on that? Uh -huh. Sure Ooh. did. Something's wrong. And we have a feeling you probably missed it. You'll notice that Riley's mom wears glasses throughout the movie. This scene from when Riley is a baby is no exception. From this angle, we can see from the back that she's wearing her glasses as usual, yet when the point of view switches and we see her through baby Riley's eyes, no glasses. What should we do? We're gonna find out what's happening, but we'll need support. Is this a statement about how Riley sees her mom, or is this an error? You tell us. Hockey. Uh-oh, what do we do? Guys, uh, th 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 Number 7. Is Mrs. Otterton's purse missing, or is this just an animation error? Over the course of this whole scene, Mrs. Otterton has this yellow purse on her arm. Yet when the camera zooms in on her holding the photo, it seems that the purse is gone. Of course, you have to be paying pretty close attention to notice this. And yes, admittedly, we were paying pretty close attention. Please wait out here. Of course. Oh, thank you both so much. One second. Number 8. How did Raja end up with boxers in his mouth? This is why Prince Ahmed stormed out. Oh, father. We all remember this moment when Jasmine's faithful tiger Raja bites Prince Ahmed and rips a hole in the very inconvenient part of his pants. We can then see the prince's heart printed underwear peeking out from underneath. It doesn't seem that Raja actually gets a bite of the man's underwear, yet in the next scene, Raja is walking around with what appears to be a piece of the underwear in his mouth. Raja was just yeah. playing with him, weren't you, Raja? Number 9. No one wants disappearing oars when they're in a rowboat. Luckily, Prince Eric and Ariel made it out of this unfortunate situation alive, but we're not sure how. That was a close one. Too close! And we're actually not sure how they even got into the situation in the first place. Right before Kiss the Girl, when Eric is guessing Ariel's name, he's using oars to row the boat. Suddenly, though, it seems that the oars are gone. All's well that ends well, we suppose, and we know they get to land again, but it's still pretty peculiar. Number 10. Where exactly is Chip's Chip? I saw her! Not another word. But into the tub. What? Well, that depends on the scene. Chip's Chip actually switches sides repeatedly throughout Beauty and the Beast. 
You'd think the character design would have stayed consistent throughout, but when you pay attention, it's clear that it didn't. If your name's gonna be Chip, the placement of your chip should probably stay the same. Number 11. This portrait actually traveled through time. Yes, Chip's chip wasn't the only mistake in Beauty and the Beast, and this one is particularly weird. Anyone who's seen Beauty and the Beast knows that Prince Adam was turned into the Beast by an enchantress many years before the movie takes place. The Beast needs to find someone who loves him for who he is before he turns 21. Consequently, we can glean that Prince Adam was only a child when he was cursed. Sure, in this stained glass retelling of the story at the beginning of the movie, the prince is portrayed as older, but Prince Adam would have been about 10 or 11 the last time he was human. That makes it pretty confusing that this portrait of him is clearly him as an adult. He looks exactly like he does when he's transformed back into his human self. It is you! Number 12. The architecture in Aladdin goes through some pretty weird changes. Well, it's not much, but it's got a great view. The palace actually totally changes shape. Usually when we see the dome of the palace, it is round. After Arabian Nights, though, the palace looks totally different, and the dome is more oval-shaped. Did the animators just forget how the palace originally looked? Number 13. There's a pretty glaring typo in Alice in Wonderland. Beg your pardon? We all make typos once in a while, even the minds behind one of Disney's most famous films. Alice in Wonderland was based on the book by Lewis Carroll. Carroll is spelled with two L's. In the intro credits for the movie, though, they actually misspell his name. It reads, an adaptation of Lewis Carroll's adventures of Alice in Wonderland and through the looking glass. And yes, they only use one L. Of all the people whose names you could spell incorrectly, the guy who wrote the story is a pretty bad one to choose. Number 14. A magically reappearing door handle? We wish all home repairs were like this scene in Snow White. In the scene where the dwarves run away from the cottage, Dopey gets stuck and breaks the handle off the cottage door. In the very next scene, though, the handle is magically back on the door. Pretty spooky stuff. Number 15. Next time you watch The Rescuers, be sure to pay extra attention to Miss Bianca's purple coat. She wears the coat in question for most of the movie, but it seems that at random moments the coat simply disappears. That's definitely not the best way to stay warm. Number 16. Georgette's pillow may be haunted. Didn't expect to discover a hidden ghost story in Oliver and Company, but here we are. Georgette from Oliver and Company is a truly iconic character, and her song, Perfect Isn't Easy, is, well, the perfect song for her. In the middle of the song, she falls onto a bed that's surrounded by pink pillows. Just a second later, though, one of the pillows has a framed picture on it. Everything from the doorknobs down is mine! Did you ever notice these mistakes? Which ones have you noticed that we didn't include? Tell us about it in the comments. Blood, blood, blood! Are you tired of telling your friends about that weird plot hole in Encanto? Well, don't worry, pal, we believe you, and we've got your back in this list of Disney's biggest plot holes ever. Number one, they say they don't talk about Bruno, but they really should have talked about Bruno a bit more. And we've got to talk about Dolores too. So Mirabelle's cousin Dolores can't keep a secret for five minutes at a dinner, but has been hearing Bruno in the walls for how many years and never bothered to mention it to anyone until after everything happens and just in passing? She's gonna tell everyone. Number two, this problem is a little more than allegorical. So in Zootopia, we argue that prey aren't actually prejudiced to be afraid of carnivorous animals. Now, predator and prey live in harmony. Let us explain. In the metropolis of Zootopia, prey live peacefully alongside predators, a minority representing just 10% of the population. The movie's racial allegory reinforces for good reason that it's wrong for a majority to irrationally fear an oppressed minority. But that important message is undercut by the fact that unlike the unfairly maligned real world populations they represent, predators are by their nature inclined to be dangerous to the prey that they hunt to survive. So in trying to say something important the film almost veers into being offensive. It was a classic doing the wrong thing for the right reason kind of a deal. Number three, Big Hero spoilers ahead. So the majority of the plot in Big Hero 6 hinges on the loss of Abigail Callahan, who was shot into a portal as part of a teleportation experiment, leading the government to shut down the experiment because it went wrong. This leaves Abigail lost in the void between the teleportation portals. What's most frustrating about this is that the government was so quick to shut down a multi-billion dollar project with incredible potential just because of the loss of a single person. When it comes to real government projects, especially something 
something of this magnitude, it would be expected that human lives may be lost, much like the exploration of space. A single lost life probably wouldn't have caused the government to shut down an experiment of this nature in real life. Number 4. Snowmen are capable of love, and we're here to prove it. In the first Frozen film, Olaf says he is not leaving the fireplace until they find a way to help Anna and her chilly disease. And love, as defined by the movie itself, is self-sacrifice. This means Olaf's act of love, risking his existence to help, should have cured her frost sickness. Olaf, you're melting. But we're not done with this film yet, oh no. Also, when Anna leaves to find Elsa, she leaves Hans in charge of the kingdom. And he seems to be a pretty good leader for the most part. So why do the villagers cheer when she decks him later in the film? They had no idea that he's actually a creepy bad guy. Only the main characters would have known that. Number 5. This franchise has an infinity and beyond of plot problems. First, why doesn't Woody ever mention his previous owners, or seem to remember them at all? And why doesn't he realize that he came from an old TV show? In Toy Story 2, it's revealed that Woody has been in Andy's family for years and that he comes from a 1950s television show. If that's the case, then there's no doubt that Woody would have had an owner before Andy, even if it was within the same family. It is then revealed in Toy Story 3 when Andy gives his toys to Bonnie that Woody won't forget Andy when he's transferred to a new owner. This confirms that there's no reason for Woody to have forgotten his owner before Andy. And while we're at it, let's talk about Buzz Lightyear's toy brain too. If Buzz Lightyear doesn't think he's a toy, why does he freeze around children like a toy should? Number 6. This might be the most annoying plot hole of all. So in The Little Mermaid, we know that Ariel can read and write since she signs Ursula's contract. So when she meets Eric, why doesn't she search for a quill and a parchment or even write in the sand? You don't have a voice, but you have a brain, Ariel. Let's get it together. Number 7. A film about magic that has inconsistencies? Who would have thunk? We argue the character Charlotte should have turned into a frog at one point. This is because she kissed Naveen after midnight. Prince Naveen needs to kiss a princess in order for him and Tiana to turn from frog back to human. Charlotte steps up to the plate since she is a temporary princess as her dad had been crowned King of Mardi Gras. But Charlotte doesn't kiss Naveen until after midnight when she is technically no longer a princess. Charlotte, therefore, should have also turned into a frog. <laughs> Number 8. This plot hole is a famous one, and we're here to keep its legacy going. In Monsters, Inc., Mike says he and Sully met in the fourth grade, but this essentially is cancelled out by Monsters University when they meet for the first time in college. James P. Sullivan. Mike Wazowski. Number 9. Our greatest wish is for someone to explain this next loophole. In the animated Aladdin film, his wish to become a prince is granted, so there shouldn't be a royalty issue with Princess Jasmine based on those rules the Sultan quotes. Aladdin uses his second wish to become a prince, and that wish is granted. However, for some reason, Aladdin either forgets or doesn't accept that he's become a prince, because he keeps bringing up the fact that Princess Jasmine can only marry a prince. But he asked to become a prince. The wish was granted. The work is done. That should be the end of it. The genie should have explained this to him, but it seems Robin Williams was too busy improvising lines to follow the logic, we guess. Number 10. A little zoological inconsistency for you animal lovers out there. In The Lion King, some anteaters show up for a visual treat in I Just Can't Wait to Be King. But why do anteaters, which are native to South and Central America, show up in The Lion King, which takes place in Africa? Your move, Disney. Number 11. Oh, Cinderella, have we got some problems, my friend. First, why did Prince Charming have to search far and wide for Cinderella and check every single woman's foot in the kingdom? If this guy was searching for the love of his life, wouldn't he at least have remembered her facial features and that she was blonde? That ought to knock off some potential wives you were interviewing for the job. Next up, everything that the fairy godmother transformed comically reverted back to its original state at the stroke of midnight, except Cinderella's glass slippers. And why didn't they turn back? Plot convenience, that's why. And here's another thing. How is it possible that literally no other woman in the kingdom had the same shoe size as Cinderella? Had they done what they did, there'd be hundreds of thousands of women who were Cinderella. Another argument against monarchies. Number 12. 
For a guy who just learned English, he's got a lot of Brooklyn in him. In the film Tarzan, if Jane and her family are from London and they teach Tarzan English, why does Tarzan speak with an American accent? He doesn't speak much to them, but not only is his English pretty great, it very clearly has no British accent at all. Not even a gorilla accent or a chimpanzee. Seems like an oversight on the part of the voice cast. I will miss you, Jane. Number 13. If you thought we were going hard on Cinderella, just wait for our take on Beauty and the Beast. First, in Beauty and the Beast, the Beast saves Belle when she's being attacked by wolves in the forest and collapses. The next time we see him, he's on the back of Belle's horse. So here's the question. How did Belle get him on there? Did she seriously lift the collapsed beast from the floor all the way onto her horse? Does Belle have super strength? We're just left to assume that Belle is a superhero. Or maybe she's just like super into CrossFit. Could you imagine Belle reading her books one minute and then flipping tires the next? Also, at one point in Beauty and the Beast, Mrs. Potts tells her son Chip to get in the cupboard with his brothers and sisters. Yeah, those teacups you see back there? They're Chip's siblings, apparently. But at the end, and we really only see Chip transformed back into a human. What happened to all the other teacups? Are they stuck as teacups? Is Chip just the favorite kid? So many questions. Do I still have to sleep in the cupboard? <laughs> Here's another one, and it's a bit nitpicky, but that's what we're here for. Despite being told numerous times not to go to the west wing of the castle, why does Belle go anyway? and then have the guts to act surprised when the beast is mad at her for doing so. Now, we don't make a habit of defending people who imprison us, but I mean, Belle is meant to be pretty clever. Number 14, another reason kings are so overrated. So in the film Hercules, Hades sends his minions to make sure Hercules no longer lives after drinking some poison. Hercules is alive and lives a pretty happy life for at least 16 years. So in all those 16 years, Hades is still somehow surprised Hercules is alive, even though the whole underworld and the subject of non-living is his job. He didn't have any time to check incoming shipments or any of the spreadsheets they probably have down there. Those were all our favorite and most egregious plot holes that we noticed. Any you noticed over the years that we didn't mention? Not now, soldier. When you hear the name of a big budget studio like Disney, you probably wouldn't think they take shortcuts. But what if that wasn't true at all? When it comes to animation, shortcuts have been made throughout the entirety of the studio's history. You'll be shocked at just how many animated Disney films copied animation from one another. Number one, pulling out hair. Want to bet? Oh! On the surface, the princess and the frog and the sword and the stone don't really have much in common. But if we take this scene of Lewis and this scene of Madame Mim and put them side by side, you'll think otherwise. The animation of Madame Mim pulling out her hair is the same animation as Lewis. The only difference is he doesn't have any hair. <laughs> Princess and the Frog is actually the most recent Disney film to have copied animation. This is because most Disney films nowadays use computerized animation instead. Think Frozen and Moana. But, hey, whoa! Copied animation was used frequently in older films because it saved time and money. But with new tech and a high-budget movie studio, there isn't a need for it anymore. Besides maybe for nostalgia purposes. Number two, copying fueled by nostalgia. Not so long as I'm around. Well, in that case, you're fired. When The Lion King live action was announced, the world buzzed about its star-studded cast. Beyonce, Seth Rogen, Donald Glover. And this is what? one of those instances. That wasn't my thing. You told me about the line. What more could a Disney fan ask for? Well, the studio really said Hakuna Matata and gave us a nostalgia-filled live action equipped with identical animations to the original film. Now you may be thinking, the new film uses computerized animation, what was the need for copying animation? The most probable answer is, nostalgia. Nostalgia sells and Disney knows it. Whoa, nice one Simba, thanks. Number three, Buzz's meaningful reflection. Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Come in, Star Command. Have you ever noticed that Buzz Lightyear's first scenes in Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 2 are eerily similar? The scenes both feature the animation of Buzz's reflection in his helmet. While this was probably more of a creative decision rather than a decision made to reduce the budget, it just goes to show how much copying animation can come in handy. But there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Number four, they could basically be twins. Here's the deal. What's the saying? Like mother, like daughter? That's especially true for Princess Ariel and her daughter Melody. 
They look almost identical besides Melody having her father's hair color and eyes. However, the similarities don't stop there. If we compare this scene of Ariel swimming to the one of her daughter in part 2, it's easy to recognize that the animation in the two scenes is also identical. Like Toy Story, this totally could have been done as a creative choice. Or maybe having mermaid animation stocked away somewhere was too tempting for animators to resist. It's uh, it's just my collection. Number 5. A not so unique ballroom dance. It's a tale as old as time, at least in the world of Disney. Princess meets prince, they fall in love, and then they have an epic ballroom dance scene that'll go down in history. <sighs> well, because the older Disney princess films tended to follow the same story arc, it meant that shared animation between the films wasn't uncommon. For instance, the ballroom dance scenes in both Sleeping Beauty and Beauty and the Beast. The animation of the pair's dance steps is exactly the same. Number 6. Cat Chase what do Cinderella and 101 Dalmatians have in common? On the surface, not much, but a side-by-side -side comparison of the films would prove otherwise. This chase scene from Cinderella where the cat Lucifer gets scared by Bruno has the same animation as Sergeant Tibbs getting scared by Jasper. Look at the way both Lucifer and Sergeant Tibbs jump and react before running away. Number 7. The Fish Just Keep Swimming One side, sister. These two underwater scenes in the original Pinocchio and the original Alice in Wonderland couldn't be more different context-wise. In Pinocchio, we're moving alongside a creepy octopus in what appears to be a dark part of the sea, while the Alice in Wonderland scene is more playful and light as we follow a top-hatted man. But if we divert our attention to the fish in this scene, you'll notice that almost all the animation has been replicated apart from their differing backdrops. Number 8. The Adventure of Christopher and Mowgli <laughs> Winnie the Pooh and the Jungle Book don't necessarily have similar storylines, although they're both centered around a boy who is friends with animals. In Christopher Robin's case, stuffed animals. But the similarities between Christopher Robin and Mowgli run deeper than just their love for animals. In these two scenes, the animation of Christopher Robin and Mowgli exploring and climbing rocks are identical. Even the way they stumble is the same. Number 9. Bird Bathing Those are birds! Bambi and Alice in Wonderland couldn't be any more different. Beg your pardon. One film is about a baby deer who loses his parents and is forced to encounter his fears and make a new family with his forest friends. And the other is about a young girl who falls down a rabbit hole, literally, and into a fantasy world filled with fantastical creatures and adventures. But one thing they have in common? These two scenes of a bird taking a bath. While the ponds are a little different, the color and animation of the bird are the same. Number 10. Water Under the Bridge Who knew that this scene of Grumpy getting annoyed and getting, well, grumpy could have so much relevance later on? Almost 30 years after Snow White was released, Disney reused the animation of the scene to create this one of Bagheera hitting his head in the Jungle Book. Oh, that does it! Besides the characters looking nothing alike, the animation is definitely reused. Number 11. Dogs in All Their Forms Wolves are just big dogs, and nothing proves it better than these two scenes from 101 Dalmatians and The Jungle Book. In 1961, 101 Dalmatians gave us these adorable puppy scenes that are still cute today. <coughs> then a few years later, The Jungle Book introduced this pack of wolf pups, who happened to act suspiciously similar to the Dalmatians. If you pay attention to their movements and the wagging of their tails, you'll see that this is another case of Disney reusing animation. I'm not sleepy, I'm hungry. Number 12. They could be identical. You're thinking about somebody with long eyelashes. It seems like the creators of Robin Hood really took a liking to how the Jungle Book portrayed Baloo's movement. So much so that they went ahead and copied a lot of animation from the film, especially when it came to Little John. Given that they're both bears, it seems only natural that they would take a shortcut like this. In the end, the two characters ended up with a lot of the same mannerisms. Number 13. Elephant Trunks Galore the similarities between Robin Hood and The Jungle Book don't stop there. It seems like they didn't only take reference when it came to animating Little John. You know something, Robin? You're taking too many chances. The elephants in both films move exactly the same. And why wouldn't they reuse animation for this scene? It is the logical thing to do. Number 14. Princess or Maiden Being one of the first iconic Disney and princess movies to ever exist, it's only natural that going forward creators of different Disney films would want to take reference from it. And there are plenty of ways we can see that reflected. One being spotting repetitive animation in other films, like this scene of Snow White compared to this one of Robin Hood's Maid Marian. 
The animations of the two women dancing are the same. Number 15, like cat, like dog. Here's yet another example involving 101 Dalmatians, but this time it's being compared to the Aristocats. Come on, cats, we gotta split. In these two scenes, Thomas O'Malley and Sergeant Tibbs have the same animation. The only difference is there aren't a whole bunch of puppies hiding behind Thomas O'Malley. We all love watching Disney movies, no matter how old we are. But if you ever read the original tells, you'll find out that they are absolutely not appropriate for kids. That's because we're not sure whether they are reading a love story or a horror story. Stay tuned until the end to know what really happened to Rapunzel. If you love Disney as much as we do, don't forget to subscribe and please give this video a big thumbs up. Today, we are showing you 10 disturbing real stories behind Disney fairy tales. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs We all remember the story of Snow White, the young girl who ran away from her home because her stepmother was jealous of her beauty. She wanted the hunter to come back with her heart, but the princess had the chance to stay with the Seven Dwarfs. It didn't keep the evil queen from trying to get rid of her one more time and make her eat a poisoned apple. When we think about it, the Disney movie really sounds like a horror story too. But the original story is actually worse. In the Brothers Grimm version, the evil queen still wanted to get rid of her daughter, but this time she wanted the hunter to come back with her lungs and her liver. When he came back with the body parts of a boar, the queen immediately ate them, thinking they belonged to Snow White. But when she heard the truth, she tried to get rid of the princess two other times before giving her the poisoned apple. The evil queen sold her bodice laces that were so tight that she stopped breathing and also gave her a poisoned comb. It was a warning to teach young girls that they shouldn't become vain. At the end of the tale, the evil queen was punished when she was forced to wear burning hot iron shoes and dance until she takes her last breath. Surprisingly, as grown-ups, we prefer this ending. Hey guys, we are so excited to announce we are producing our own original content. Head over to the Trendy for the best DIYs, fashion tips, makeup hacks, and so much more. We are sure you're going to love it. And be sure to let us know what you think in the comment section. We love to hear from you. See you there. Cinderella. In this story, a young girl is forced to work as a servant before her fairy godmother gives her the chance to go to the ball where she meets her Prince Charming. It looks really romantic, except when you think that he didn't even recognize the love of his life after that night. But you will find out that it's not that bad when you hear what really happened to Cinderella and her sisters. In the Brothers Grimm version, the princess didn't have a fairy godmother, but planted a tree by her mother's grave and prayed under it every day. This is where she found dresses to wear to each ball, as she went to three balls in this story. The prince only danced with her before the mysterious princess disappeared by jumping into a pigeon coop or climbing up a pear tree. This is why on the third night, he decided to set a trap to make sure that she wouldn't escape. The stairway was smeared with pitch, and this is why she lost a shoe. When he tried to find who it belonged to, this is when things go a little crazy. The sisters tried it and cut off their toes and their heels to fit in the shoes, but the prince noticed the blood. When Cinderella finally got married, they tried to attend the wedding, but their eyes were pecked out by birds. This is not what we call a happily ever after. Sleeping Beauty This story was already weird to start with. A young woman falls asleep until she is saved by the kiss of a prince, but when you think about it, it is not romantic at all to kiss someone without their consent, but it is not that bad when you hear about the original story. In the original tale by Jean Battista Basile called the sun, the moon, and Talia, absolutely nothing can ever be considered romantic. This time there are no fairies, but men who foretell that the princess will be put in great danger by a splinter of flax. The king tried to protect her, but on her 16th birthday, she saw an old woman spinning on a spindle. When she tried to stretch the flax, it went under her nail and she passed away. When her father found out about this, he left the body of his daughter in his home and left this place forever. After some time, another king came to to their home, and his falcon flew into the window of his palace. He entered the place and found a beautiful girl who couldn't wake up. This is when things get really inappropriate. He took her to bed and made love to her. Let's just tell you once again that dead girls can't consent. Talia became pregnant and gave birth to twins, and it's when his son sucked on her finger and removed the splinter of flax that she finally woke up. That's not romantic. 
The Little Mermaid This Disney movie looks really nice before you think that Ariel gave away everything for a stranger and changed who she was to please him. Everything was fine at the end, but we still think that she took too many risks for a man that she didn't know. Unfortunately for the original Little Mermaid, things didn't work out for her. In Anderson's tale, the story is really similar, but the choice that she makes is worse. The Little Mermaid exchanges her tongue for a pair of legs, but this time, if she fails, she won't only turn back into a mermaid. She will actually die if she fails. Just to make things worse, she wants to walk on Earth because humans have eternal souls while mermaids don't. It just makes her death much more terrifying. And having legs is not as good as you think. In the original story, every single step she takes will feel like she is walking on sharp shards of glass. In the original tale, the prince ends up marrying the woman he thinks is the person who saved him. The mermaid has one more chance to stay alive if she gets rid of the prince, but she fails. Instead, she throws herself into the sea and turns into sea foam. If there is one thing that can make her happier, it's that she could earn a soul after 300 years for the good thing that she did. Is this really a happy ending? Beauty and the Beast This love story was just terrible when you think about it. When someone forces you to stay in their castle no matter how nice they try to be, you shouldn't marry them. We know that the Beast became a better man, but things like that don't happen in real life. You don't change people, people change themselves. This time, the original story from Jean-Marie Le Prince de Beaumont is not so far from what we saw in the two Disney movies. The young woman was named Beauty, which is actually the meaning of Belle in French. Her father used to be a rich merchant, but things didn't really work out for him and he became poor. Beauty also had many siblings, including two evil sisters. Once again, his father ended up being the prisoner of the beast because he stole a rose. The beast told him that he would let him go in exchange for one of his daughters, and he accepted in exchange for things to give to his family. You know the rest of the story, but what is disturbing is that when Beauty came back home, her sisters were extremely jealous of her luxurious life. This is why her sisters forced her to stay, even though she promised the Beast that she would come back, because they wanted the monster to eat her alive. After all, she is better with the Beast than with her family. Aladdin. This time we have nothing against the main character. Even though Aladdin was a thief, he had a heart of gold. But we can't say the same thing about Jafar, who was trying to force Jasmine to marry him, which is not really a thing that kids should see. This time, the original story is really similar, but there is one thing that really surprised us. Aladdin used to live in China, which makes him Chinese and not Arab. We don't know why they changed this important detail, but we have to admit we love seeing the beauty of this country. Once again, the thief was recruited by a sorcerer to steal the magic lamp, but this time he pretended to be the little brother of Aladdin's late father. When he got the lamp, Aladdin even wanted to sell it in exchange for food until he met the genie. This time it was much easier to marry the princess as he had just become rich and powerful to let the sultan's daughter fall into his arms. What is fun about this is that she used to be called Princess Badrubador, so we totally understand why they changed her name to Jasmine. The ending is more violent as Aladdin gets rid of the sorcerer and then slays his brother disguised as a woman. But at the end, the couple lives happily ever after, so we could say that it's our favorite story for now. Pocahontas. You probably already know that Pocahontas really existed, but if you were thinking about a young princess who fell in love with John Smith and saved his life before he had to come back to Europe, that's because Disney has been lying to you. This story is absolutely wrong. First, Pocahontas was only a nickname meaning spoiled child, and the girl's real name was Matoka. She was actually still a kid when she met John Smith, so they were not in love with each other. Even though sparks didn't fly between them, the man claimed that the young Native American did save his life when he was captured by Powhatan's men. But nothing proves that it really happened, as Smith only talked about this years later. Matoaka was also in contact with the Europeans as an important supplier of food and an informer for the colony. However, they didn't like her in the best way because she was taken prisoner at age 17 and they held her hostage for more than a year. She made a deal with another man, John Rolfe, who promised that she would be released if she married him. Matoaka became Rebecca Rolfe, had a son named Thomas, and was forced to moved to Europe. She passed away really young at age 21. Whoever says that this is a love story is absolutely wrong, and Disney made a mistake when they decided to change her story.
Mulan Here's a woman that should be a role model. This time Mulan didn't want to be a housewife and decided to become a warrior instead, even if it meant that she had to risk her life and pretend that she was a man. She did face danger, but at least this time Disney didn't want us to believe that it was romantic. But did you know that the movie was actually inspired by a legendary warrior? You can read the original story of the Chinese tale, The Ballad of Mulan. Then a play was produced to show what happened to Hua Mulan. Some people think that this amazing woman really existed and this is her story. We'll tell you about the main differences when we compare the tale to the movie. Mulan was actually a really skilled warrior and didn't have to train like the young woman that we saw in the movie. She grew up as a tomboy and her father taught her how to fight at a young age. Mulan didn't have to lie to her parents about wanting to go to war and they even supported her because it was the most natural decision for her. She was also super confident from the start and obviously didn't have any sidekick. We also love that there was no big gender reveal. She just decided to share her secret, and everyone was okay with that. Why can't we see a movie about the real Milan? The Princess and the Frog This one is a classic, but it still took years before we had the chance to see the movie. And Disney really surprised us. We all thought it was weird to kiss a frog, and we're happy to see that Tiana thought the same thing too. But what really happened in the original tale? The young woman was not a waitress, but a real princess, the most beautiful one anyone has ever seen. She liked to go into the forest and sit on the edge of a cool well to play with a golden ball. She dropped it in the water, and a frog offered to give it back to her as long as she she would accept him as her companion and playmate. She said yes, but broke her promise when she came back home without him. The next day, the frog was at her door. She had to spend some time with him, even if she was disgusted by the little creature. The princess became angry and threw him against the wall. This was when the frog turned into a beautiful prince who was now her companion. Surprisingly, he forgave her, and they came back to his kingdom together. So the girl was actually really mean in the original tale, and there was no kiss, so we absolutely don't understand where it comes Comes from. For once, we think that Disney really did a better job. Tangled. This was one of the most recent Disney movies based on a tale that people had the chance to read years ago. Flynn Rider is clearly one of the most charming princes, but isn't it weird to think that he entered her room without her permission and the princess decided to leave with him anyway? It was the best decision she ever made, but it's still weird. Anyway, the original tale comes from the Brothers Grimm. The beginning of the story is really similar, but this time the man that saved her was actually a prince. He was seduced by her voice and wanted to meet her. He he asked Rapunzel to let down her hair and climbed. He was so nice that she quickly fell in love with him and they got engaged on the same night. She asked him to bring a strand of silk every time he would come to visit her so she could weave a ladder. But the sorceress found out about it, cut her hair, and let Rapunzel suffer in the wilderness. She tricked the prince. He threw himself out of the tower and poked out his eyes. Blind, he finally heard Rapunzel's voice in the forest after she had given birth to twins. She saved him with her tears and they lived happily ever after in his kingdom. Need a new meme collection for Twitter or just looking for a laugh? Disney's freeze frames are godsend. You won't believe some of these hilarious Disney moments. Now let's check out the Disney moments we all wish we could unsee. Ariel and Eric. Let's start with one of the most WTF moments. What even is this, Ariel? Why would you fall for this guy? Just look at his face. And look at her face in comparison. You've probably seen the meme about Eric looking at Ariel in the most loving way possible. It's cute, but we feel like this freeze frame is a million times better. Seriously, what's actually happening here? Ariel really does love Eric no matter what he looks like, doesn't she? Their love is clearly totally mutual. Just look at the way she looks at him. Sure, we can't understand why, but hey, you don't question true love, no matter how weird it looks. Gaston being his extreme self. Okay, Gaston, we understand you're angry and upset. But don't you think that choker is, you know, choking you? This definitely seems like an extreme case of something most of you are far too young to know about. Uh, seriously, what is even happening here? Also, why is his neck as thick as the arms on his muscles? It's no wonder that choker is way too tight for him. This freeze frame definitely makes you think that thing's gonna choke him. But it's also a pretty good representation of how you might feel on the inside when you have to explain something to someone for a millionth time. Kim Possible, not possible. 
she's your basic average girl, but this move definitely isn't. Seriously, this freeze frame is the most glorious theme that's come out of the Kim Possible intro. You need to pause it at the right moment, just when the cheerleaders do their spin. We have no idea what's happening here, but there is so much to look at. What's with their triangle legs? The girl on the right with her eyes open looks clearly shook by all of this, and the very last girl on the left looks ashamed of the entire situation. Seriously, what is this and why does it exist? We really can't get over their legs. They look absolutely hilarious. Sultan and Genie when Aladdin said that he can show us the world, we had no idea he meant this freeze frame. Disney really knows how to make some inappropriate jokes, and sometimes they even squeeze them in freeze frames. Sultan was pretty fascinated by magic, so maybe Genie gave him something else to be fascinated by? Either way, this freeze frame is iconic, and if we have to see it, you have to see it too. Sorry, we don't make the rules. We do have one rule for these two, though. They should really get a room and sort it out. Out. Judging by this freeze frame, they'd both be game for that. Anna and Hans Disney's no stranger to raunchy scenes. Okay, sure, this might look innocent, but we bet some parents actually freaked out at this. Or they would have freaked out if they paused Frozen at the right moment. Elsa was completely against Anna and Hans's engagement. No one's brothers are staying here, no one is getting married. We couldn't understand why, but looking at this freeze frame, we can clearly see why she thought they were moving too fast. Like, seriously, way too fast. Uh, slow down, guys, and make sure your scenes are still child-friendly. <laughs> Luckily for them, this is just a freeze frame, but can you imagine what parents would have said if this was a longer scene? Nope, nope, nope. Let's keep Disney as pure as possible and stick to the subtle jokes. Flynn really loves Rapunzel's hair. Flynn Rider, aka Eugene, is a total babe, and we're all slightly jealous Rapunzel gets to keep him. But if you pause Tangled at the right moment, you'll end up with some pretty bizarre scenes. Rapunzel's hair is absolutely awesome, but we probably couldn't really wrap our necks around it and look the same way Flynn does. Some people might say he has a definite preference for her hair, if you know what we mean. Um, seriously, he's enjoying this way too much, and it's making us a little uncomfortable. This Cusco scene. Just this moment alone is a reminder how terrifying Cusco actually looks. Sure, Emperor's New Groove is a hilarious movie and it's one of our favorites, but we can't get over Cusco's look. What even is that? He's a guy turned into a talking llama. You seriously can't make that up. Wait, except Disney did make that up. He's one of those characters you can appreciate on screen, but let's be honest. We wouldn't be running to hug Cusco if we saw him in Disneyland. He just looks like he came straight out of a horror movie. It's hard to believe he can actually be a funny character. He is a beast, after all. Okay, we know Beauty and the Beast is all about being beautiful on the inside, but this image made us wonder just how far inside did Belle have to look, because Beast is really proving that he is indeed a beast. Although, let's be honest, we all look like this when our favorite food is placed in front of us, don't we? Beast really looks like he's in love with food, right? Talk about foodie. Hashtag relatable. A powerful king. If we can never unsee this, neither should you. We know the king and Grand Duke had a special relationship. Well, Grand Duke was basically the king's servant, but what exactly is happening in this freeze frame? It's hard to believe that this was a completely unplanned freeze frame moment. We know Disney has a low-key, raunchy sense of humor, so a Fifty Shades of Grey type of a scene doesn't seem that far-fetched. Question is, is Grand Duke actually enjoying whatever is going on in this photo? Okay, wait, don't answer that. We don't want to know. You want to get a room, you to Aladdin, are you okay? If you need new memes for Twitter, just watch Aladdin and pause at any given moment. You're guaranteed some fantastic expressions, like this freeze frame that pretty much points out just how uncomfortable Aladdin is. In Stan Twitter language, he clearly looks just maybe a little bit shooketh with what's happening. But what exactly is happening? To be honest, we don't even know ourselves, but it's very clear that Aladdin looks terrified. And let's be honest, who wouldn't be terrified in that situation? Aladdin is pretty much reacting how we'd all react if someone said something shocking. This Tarzan moment. 
Remember the meme that said something like, they say you can become anything, so I became a cloud? Well, Tarzan pretty much recreated that in this freeze frame moment. Sure, he's not as buff as the real cloud meme man, but he's definitely getting there. Tarzan is just a baby cloud. Seriously though, how hilarious is this moment? He looks like he's just holding in his breath to make his cheeks match his muscles. We're telling you, that's literally what a human cloud would look like. This gossip circle. Okay, so we know that Olaf, Kristoff, and Sven are pretty much the three musketeers of Frozen, but they really look like they could belong in a Mean Girls movie in this Frozen frame. Olaf's suggested face and shocked looks in response make it seem as if Olaf said something truly disgusting. Like we said, we wouldn't be surprised if he did, considering Disney's subtle adult humor. And Kristoff's face is honestly hilarious. He's just really not sure with whatever's going on. Can't blame him, really. Talking to a snowman is bizarre in the first place. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, now things are really getting hot when it comes to freeze frames. Disney has so many glorious freeze frames, but we promise, The Little Mermaid has the most of them. Just like Aladdin, you can seriously pause The Little Mermaid at any time and you'll find an amazing freeze scene. Just look at this one. Ariel might be singing, but this freeze frame makes her look like she's in some compromising position that's definitely too much for a Disney movie. We're sorry you'll never be able to unsee this. We really are. Toy Story Horror Okay, this isn't exactly a freeze frame, but it's a perfect Twitter meme. Toy Story isn't exactly a horrifying movie. Huh? Right? Buddy? But it definitely becomes one if you take any character and do a whiteout on their eyes. Seriously, try it. Characters with eyes like that automatically become terrifying, and suddenly, Toy Story could very well be a horror movie. Can you imagine Woody looking like that in all movies? We're pretty sure they'd have to rename Toy Story to Horror Story. He looks terrified of it himself. Nope, we're definitely not here for this. Hades in a total drag race look. We need to see someone pull a Hades on RuPaul's Drag Race. Just look how fabulous he is. He's really feeling himself in this freeze frame, isn't he? It's like a perfect sassy Twitter meme when someone has to admit you were right all along. We're pretty sure a drag queen would be able to figure out how to make those blue flames come to life. Come on, RuPaul, give us a Disney drag queen makeover. But seriously, this freeze frame is absolutely perfect. BRB, adding this to the Twitter memes folder. What are you doing with those beads? Sometimes we do wonder how on earth did they imagine to get away with this particular scene in the original Cinderella. Jacques and Gus were the ultimate mouse friends and they were so much fun to watch. But remember the scene where they were putting together Cinderella's dress? Well, if you paused it at the right time, you'd get this moment. We seriously have no idea why they'd even add this scene in there. Jacques pulling out beads out of Gus's, uh, behind? is definitely a questionable look. Bats. And what in the world is this? This is almost as bad as having a spider on your tongue. You can find this freeze frame in Emperor's New Groove, and seriously, it's kind of terrifying. Imagine bats flying out of your mouth. Is this supposed to represent some kind of a metaphor? We really can't tell, but either way, it makes the movie look a million times more horrifying. This is a picture you'd include if you were making one of those Disney out of context type of Twitter threads. You're welcome. Yeah, ooh, look at me and my bad self. I snatched you right out of the air. When you laugh with your friends, You've probably seen Vine videos like this before, you know, one of those that show how you laugh differently when you're with your friends versus when you're with your boyfriend. They're so true, but Aladdin's bizarre freeze frame here could easily be used as the example of laughing with your friends. We all have that ugly laugh we'd never show to anyone else but the people we can be goofy with, right? Ours definitely matches Aladdin's. This is pretty much all you would need to reply to that absurd text someone sent you. Oh, you sure showed me. Now about my three wishes. Meme-worthy Snow White. Okay, this one's pretty good too. We have no idea what happened to Snow White there, but whatever it was left her completely shooketh. You can already find this meme on Twitter, and honestly, it deserves to be there. Her face is absolutely hilarious. Just look at those eyes and that random hand. And uh, what happened to her nose? 
We can't decide if she looks totally terrified or just a little bit shocked. Either way, it's an unusual look for someone as gentle and sweet as Snow White. But nothing beats our very last freeze frame that really shows how people can have a dirty mind for almost every situation. Rough Times what were Hercules and Meg going through? This definitely is the look of complete exhaustion. Like we said, if you have a dirty mind and are used to subtle adult jokes, you're probably seeing something completely different. We can't blame you. It's really hard to unsee after you see it. This puts a whole new perspective on Hercules. But are we really surprised? He was a god after all, and by the looks of this freeze frame, he was a god in many situations. We're gonna use this meme whenever we're really tired of someone saying something that's definitely not true. Let's be honest, when it comes to entertainment, Disney knows what they're doing. There are things that Disney is just known for, from princesses to true love's kiss to happily ever after. But there are some times when even Disney forgot how to, well, Disney. New here? Hit the notification bell so you can stay up to speed on all our latest videos. And click the thumbs up button if you dig Disney as much as we do. Ready? Here are 10 times Disney forgot how to Disney. Watch until the end to find out the most wickedly funny one on the list. That time Disney forgot about true love. So many Disney films feature a boy and a girl falling in love. It became the hallmark of any Disney film. Girl is held captive, either by her stepmother, or in a tower, or in a coma brought on by an evil sorceress. Girl hopes for a man to come along and rescue her, then the prince would rescue the girl, kiss her, and they would live happily ever after. Even if they only had one real conversation, they would ride off into the sunset in their wedding attire. Sure, they'll work out all the getting to know you stuff after they tie the knot. Yeah, that'll work out, but Disney departed from that outdated narrative with the newer animated films Moana and Brave. Characters like Moana and Merida didn't need a man to rescue them. Instead, these heroes overcame their own obstacles. Moana is not even a princess, and she needs her opponent without the help of a man. Maui stayed back while Moana bravely walked right up to Taka and showed courage and compassion. Who oh, you truly are and Merida fights more do with the help of her mother and her trusty bow and arrow. That's a lot different from Disney's Cinderella and Snow White days. That time Disney forgot to be racist. Okay, real talk. Disney has had some pretty embarrassing racist moments in their past animated films. Example, did you know there is a scene in the 1940 animated classic Fantasia that was so incredibly racist they actually had to remove it from the movie? This was a total whoops moment for Disney. Apparently, there was a character called Sunflower who was a darker-skinned, smaller centaur who was a servant to the lighter-skinned centaurs. It was so offensive, Disney had to remove that character from the official DVD. And then there was the issue of the crows in Dumbo. The crows have been called stereotypically black. They spoke in heavy southern African-American jive. Well, I just can't believe my eyes. And the leader of the crows was named Jim Crow. Yikes. There are more examples, but let's focus on the way Disney has changed to avoid such embarrassing racism in their present and future films. When they made Coco, they actually hired Mexican-American political cartoonist and La Cucaracha comic creator Lalo Alcaraz as a consultant. They did this so they wouldn't slip into the mistake of wrongly portraying the culture of the Mexican people. It totally paid off. Coco is a beautiful tribute to the values and traditions of Mexican families. Thank goodness for that. That time Disney left the parents alive. Any Disney fan can tell you there are a lot of heroes who lose their parents in Disney films. Whether it's princesses who are locked away and never allowed to see their parents again, or Bambi's mother getting shot in the meadow, the mortality rate for parents in Disney films is pretty high. Either no one talks about where the missing parent is, like in The Little Mermaid or Beauty and the Beast, seriously, where are Ariel and Belle's moms? Or they meet a horrible demise, like Simba's dad, Mufasa, in The Lion King. There are too many examples to even mention them all. But in the newer Disney films, it seems Disney forgot and left the parents alive. In Moana, both of her parents get to stay alive through the whole movie. But then she does lose her grandmother. In Coco, Miguel's parents, grandmother and great-grandmother, are alive. But then he does lose Mama Coco in the end. Hmm, actually Disney still has a sadistic habit of taking out the family members of our beloved heroes. Well, there are still a couple of films with living relatives. Mulan and The Incredibles still have intact families by the end of the film, but that's a pretty small percentage. That time Disney forgot to stereotype genders. Remember when Disney films were sexist and portrayed women as only being able to cook and clean? And if you let me stay, I'll keep house for you. Oh, 
good old days. Many feminists had a big problem with the movie Cinderella. She was a slave to her home where she worked constantly, cooking and cleaning. She was only allowed to escape for the night because her fairy godmother made her look pretty. And then the prince fell in love with her beauty, but kind of forgot to ask her basic questions. You know, like where are you from or what's your name? He had to rely on a glass slipper because he never bothered to get to know her. In the end, she was only rewarded for her beauty. Then she was whisked away to become a slave in a bigger home. So romantic. But one of the biggest examples of Disney being stuck in stereotypical gender roles in Cinderella is when the female mouse says the phrase, We leave the sewing to the women. Um, we think the guys on Project Runway might disagree with you, little mouse. Thank goodness Disney forgot how to pigeonhole women. In Incredibles 2, Elastigirl is riding a motorcycle, saving people, and fighting bad guys, and leaving the sewing to someone else. And it's awesome. Is Disney forgetting how to princess? Is it just us, or does it seem that Disney princesses are on their way out? With movies like Coco, Incredibles 1 and 2, Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, Big Hero 6, and Inside Out, it's becoming harder and harder to find a princess in a Disney story. That may be because of modern times. Young girls just don't identify with a girl locked in a tower as much as they used to. Girls want adventure, excitement, and independence more and more. But does this mean it's the end End of Disney princesses? Maybe they just need a bit of rebranding, like Merida and Brave. That's one awesomely tough princess. And there is a new unconventional princess in town. Enter Wreck-It Ralph's Princess Vanellope. She's kinda bratty, she's got candy stuck to her hair, and she's the funniest princess ever. Okay, if Disney creates more princesses like her, we are definitely for it. And here's something fans are just realizing. With Disney taking control of the Star Wars franchise, that means Princess Leia is also a Disney princess. Mind blown. So what do you guys think? Is Disney forgetting their princess ways? Or are they just changing the way we see princesses to keep up with the times? The times Disney forgot to do musicals. When one thinks of Disney movies, they usually think of big musical numbers. Let it go, anyone? Disney has cornered the market when it comes to characters singing and dancing to a fully orchestrated number. Ariel gave us Part of Your World. Pocahontas gave us Colors of the Wind. Aladdin gave us A Whole New World. With so much success in these big musical films, it also seems like there are times when Disney just forgot to musical. The animals in Bambi don't sing. The characters in Up didn't belt out any tunes, though the opening score is pretty catchy. Mr. Incredible didn't sing a beautiful ballad about his love of Elastigirl, and Hero never sang to his robot. Since musical numbers seem to be what Disney is best at, we wonder why they still sometimes opt out of the big musical numbers. We guess it does make sense for the Disney fans who don't like musicals, but we can't imagine there are any Disney fans who don't. Well, we do admit it would seem weird for Hero to start singing at the Science Expo. The Times Disney Forgot to Do Happily Ever After What could be more Disney than a happy ending? Well, as it turns out, even Disney movies don't always end with the happiest possible ending for the characters. Take the Fox and the Hound, for example. The hound dog, Cooper, has to save his fox friend, Todd, from being shot by Cooper's owner. Get out of the way. And then they say goodbye and never see each other again. That's not very happily ever after. Here's another example, Wall-E. It's a sweet love story between two robots who are trying to find life on the planet that humans completely destroyed. They find a plant in a boot and spend a lot of time trying to protect it and get it in the right hands. They finally do, and the people from the Axiom are finally allowed to return home. But from their habits on that spaceship, their return is not looking too good for Mother Earth. It seems like the humans will have a lot of cleaning up to do, and their bones are all mushy and soft from living in space for so long. Not to mention, they're totally addicted to space sodas and motorized chairs. It's not a very happy ending for planet Earth. And then there's the tragedy on Disney's Inside Out. Two words, bing bong, buckets of tears, you guys. That time Disney made us root for the villains. Usually in Disney movies, it's clear who the bad guys are. We all root for the demise of the Wicked Queen in Snow White, for the fall of Cruella de Vil in 101 Dalmatians. We cheered when Jafar was imprisoned in that tiny genie lamp in Aladdin, but lately, particularly villain kids, are becoming cool. This is largely because of the Descendants movies. Descendants follows the kids of the famous Disney villains as they struggle to become good despite their evil roots. 
Maleficent's daughter, Mal, is the star of the films. She is joined by the evil queen's daughter, Evie, Jafar's son, Jay, and Cruella de Vil's son, Carlos. They're freed from the Isle of the Lost, where all the villains were banished, and allowed to come to school at Art on Prep with all the princes and princesses' kids. Everyone loves these villain kids, even when they're casting spells and tricking their peers. That's because in the end, the villain kids learn to embrace their inner goodness and leave most of their wicked ways behind. So very clever of Disney to get us to root for the bad guys. All the Descendants fans want to be chillin' like a villain, just like their favorite bad kids. That time, Disney made us love zombies. You all know what we're talking about. The Disney Channel original movie Zombies, of course. Somehow, Disney managed to make zombies cute and lovable. This monster story takes place in the lovely little town of Seabrook about 50 years after a zombie apocalypse. Thanks to a cool bracelet device the zombies wear on their wrists, they're able to keep their hunger for brains in check. This allows them to interact with their human friends without posing a threat to anyone. But that doesn't stop them from singing hot music numbers and performing high-energy dance numbers. When a human girl and a zombie boy fall for each other, they realize that they should celebrate their differences instead of letting it divide them. So of course we would fall in love with little furry Disney characters, and it's only natural that we would swoon over a hunky prince or knight. But how did Disney make fans drool over zombies? That's a pretty impressive feat to pull off, with all the new characters like Zed from Zombies, Uma with her tentacles in Descendants 2, and Mal as a dragon, who knows what Disney will think of next. One thing is for certain though, Disney made us forget to be grossed out by zombies. The time Disney forgot to take themselves too seriously. With all the amazing Disney movies and songs out there, it might be easy for the creators to get a bit full of themselves. They work really hard creating magic for all of us to enjoy, but they aren't afraid to poke fun at themselves from time to time. One great example of this is in The Lion King. Scar took over the Pride Lands and imprisoned Zazu. He told Zazu to sing him an upbeat song, so Zazu starts to sing, It's a small world after all. Scar cuts him off and tells him to sing anything but that. If you've ever been on the Small World ride at Disneyland, you'll understand why Scar made that joke. The most recent example of this is in Ralph Breaks the Internet Wreck-It Ralph 2. Vanellope bursts into a room full of Disney princesses, and they all totally make fun of the damsel princess issues of Disney past films. Rapunzel asks Vanellope if people assume all her problems were solved because a big strong man showed up, and Vanellope says, Yes! What is up with that? That's how the princesses are sure of Vanellope's princess status. At least Disney knows not to take themselves too seriously. And those were the 10 times Disney forgot how to Disney. Thanks for watching The Things. See you next time!